Hello, and welcome back to the Water Weapon News Series, and I'm going to use Blender 2.7. In this video, we'll be talking about the Bevel Modifier. Now, back in part 19 of this video series, I made a video on the Bevel Tool, but since posting that video, I've got lots of questions asking me, how do you undo the Bevel Tool? Well, inherently, the Bevel Tool is very destructive to your mesh. If I press Tab to go into edit mode of my default cube, and I select an edge in edge select mode, and I press Control B to bevel it, and I pull my mouse out, and then maybe I'll scroll up or down to round that edge out. And then let's say I keep modeling my mesh, then I realize later that I want to undo this bevel. Well, that's a pretty tricky thing to do, especially if it's a very complicated mesh. What I would probably do in this case is select lots of these edges, and maybe I would dissolve them, so I press X and dissolve edges and make sure I'm also dissolving the vertices on their ends and then maybe I would pull the edge back up and have to match it quite manually. That wasn't too difficult with a very simple object, a cube, but if you have a very complicated mesh it can be very difficult. What I would recommend instead of doing this is by using the bevel modifier. So I'm going to go ahead and press Control z a bunch of times to undo that to get back to my actual cube and I'll go back into object mode. The bevel modifier is under the wrench tab and you can click on add modifier with a mesh selected and select it right here. Once you add it, of course, it becomes added to your modifier stack over here in your properties window and it applies to the entire mesh. Now, don't stop the video here because you can actually modify it and control it so that you can specify what edges it bevels and how much it bevels each edge, so keep watching. Um, it has lots of options that are very similar to the options of the bevel tool that come up down here when you press Control B. It has width, so you can change the width of the bevel. You can change the number of segments right here to make it rounded or not. I didn't talk about profile at all. I'm not going to talk about material, but profile basically allows you to, and I'm going to turn up my segments, to make the edge sharper or even invert it to make it go concave. I'll turn it back to 0.5 though and I'll press enter. The last options in the bevel modifier are the width method and you just sort of have to play with these. The default is called offset, that means it's as round as it is right now, but you can change it to width which makes a smaller uh, bevel in my case and depth makes a larger one and percent makes the bevel very very small in my case. So you'll just have to play with those four. What I want to talk about most in this video though are these four limit methods. Now by default it's beveling everything in the mesh and that's what none means. It's limiting the bevel to nothing. It's beveling everything. But if I press tab and make a loop cut, so I'll press Control R and then click and right click and I go and press tab to go back into object mode, I'm not going to switch over into wireframe display or viewport shading. And you can see that with limit method none selected, it's beveling that one edge loop too. So in other words, it is creating lots of edges out of one. In fact, six edges out of one on the corners, and that's great. It makes the corners or the edges on the corners of the cube rounded. But in the middle of my mesh, I probably want to have that not happen. Well, it's doing that. It's beveling these ones, which means that it's taking every edge in the middle of your mesh or on the middle of a surface and it's beveling that one too and that can cause problems. So if I check angle what that'll do is it'll only bevel edges that are between faces that are facing in different angles. In other words this face and this face are facing 90 degree different angles so um, with angle set below 90 degrees it'll bevel the edge between those two faces. If I turn this value above 90 though you can see that none of the edges are now beveled because there are no uh, faces that are facing more than 96 degrees apart on my cube, everything is at 90. So if I turn this down to let's say 85, everything once again gets beveled except for that edge loop that I created which is not being beveled because these two faces are facing in the same direction, their difference in angle is zero. The next option is weight but I'm going to come back to that, I want to talk about vertex groups next. So if I select that, it's only going to bevel the vertices or the edges between vertices that I assign to a group. Now I haven't talked about this yet in any other video, but vertex groups are a tool that you can use with lots of different modifiers and tools. What this means is if I press tab to go into edit mode, and I'm going to actually click this eye to hide um, the modifier, 
and I go into vertex select mode, what I can do here is I can select vertices and assign them to a group. Now any edge that's between two selected vertices, in this case this edge, will get beveled. So how do I assign these two vertices to a vertex group? Well over here in this triangle tab, it's called the object data tab, I can now create a vertex group right here. Right now this section's empty because there are no groups, I haven't made any yet. But if I press the plus button, it creates a new group, and it's called group. <laughs> and I can name it by double clicking on it, and I'll type um, top, that's top edge, I can't type right now, edge group, and I'll press enter. And now I've made a group, but I want to assign these two vertices to that group. So with it selected, I'll click on assign. And now if I want to check to make sure that these two are in fact in this group, I can deselect all these with the A key, select my group, and click on select. And that'll select all the vertices in that group, and yes they are. So I'll press tab to go back into object mode, and I'll flip back over to my modifiers tab. And I'm going to select the vertex group with this one selected right here. When I click on this section, it'll list all the vertex groups that I already have. I only have one, the one that I just created. So I'll click on it, and now I'll turn the amount of bevel up. I might have to go back into solid view. Ah, I've got to unhide the uh, modifiers options. There it is. So that one edge is now beveled. Now, what I could do here is I could add more vertices to this group. If I press tab to go into edit mode and I go back to the object data tab and I select the ones in that group, I can add more. So I can select maybe these two as well and assign them to this group and they'll be added to the ones that are already there. So I can select these two, click on the group and click assign and now that edge becomes bevel too so I can very easily add to my bevel. I can also take away so if I can select these two and I can click um, remove and that will remove those two edges and now only this short edge is beveled. Maybe I'll select this one and assign it again. And so you can see this is a very dynamic way of doing it. Now what if I want two different edges beveled different amounts? Well what I can do is create a second vertex group and create a second instance of my modifier. So what I'll do is in my object data tab I'm going to select a different edge. I'm going to select the edge at the bottom of my mesh right here and I'm going to create a new group and I'm going to assign these two uh, vertices to this vertice group. So I'll click assign. I forgot to name it so I'll call this bottom edge group and I will assign these two. I'm not sure if I already did that or not. Uh, I want to make sure, so I'll click on select with this group selected. There we go, they're in that group. I'll now go back to object mode with the tab key of course, and back to my modifiers tab. What I can do is I can shrink this modifier down, or at least it's view down, and add a second modifier to this group. So I'll click add modifier, bevel, and right now it's applying it to the entire mesh because it's not limited at all, but I'll select vertex groups and choose the bottom edge group. And so now you can see I have this one beveled, but it's using this copy of the modifiers setting. So right now it's got a very flat uh, bevel or new face, but of course I can turn up if I want to or not. So that's how you uh, apply this modifier to different edges on the same uh, object, but there is a slightly different way as well, and that's what this new or this third option in the limit method section is. I'm going to go ahead and click these two X's to remove any copies of the modifier, and I'm going to add a new copy just to sort of refresh it. Now, what this third limit method does, it's called weights, is it allows us to assign a weight, in other words, kind of like a tag to an edge when we're in edge select mode. So what I'll do is I'll press tab to go into edit mode and I'll select an edge or two, so I'll maybe select these two. What I can do now is mark these edges, or any edges, with a weight for the bevel modifier and it's called the bevel weight. How do you do this? Well, under the edges menu, which is control E, it's right here, edge bevel weight. And it's pretty easy to miss this option actually, I didn't see it for a long, long time of using Blender. But if you click it, what you have to do now is pull your mouse away from the edge to increase the bevel weight or turn it down by moving your mouse towards the uh, edges. So I'm gonna pull it away and if you click it'll set the weight to either one which is the most bevel or zero which is no bevel 
and that factor you could also change down here so I can completely eliminate any bevel or turn it up all the way to one right there and of course if you select an edge again and press Control e and select edge bevel weight again you can adjust it and then you can turn it down or turn it off by tr clicking in or typing in negative one and so now only this one has any weight what this allows you to do though is you can assign different weights to different edges so right now this edge has whatever weight it does but now maybe I'll select um, these two edges and I'll go control E to bring up my edges menu and select edge bevel weight and then pull one else away and maybe that's what I want for those ones or maybe I'll undo with control Z and go back edge bevel weight and only make a very slight bevel right there. Of course with this method you have to have the same settings for all the edges on your mesh uh, which is true with really any of these options, but of course you can use multiple instances of this modifier uh, to make the exact effect that you want. And again, of course, because it is a modifier, you can apply it at any time to make um, the effect permanent into a real mesh that is destructive, or you can hide it at any time as long as you still have it. You can show its effects in edit mode if you want to see it, or you can hide it. And of course you can get rid of the modifier at any time. That's been a really quick introduction to the Bevel tool, but that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.